Hello and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in today's video we're continuing our exploration of the web scraping of the SEC. So this is number three in our series on that particular topic. Um, in the first video we saw kind of how to go and get filings or more, more particular get certain filing documents for any given filing and then we also looked at in the second video was how do we go and get all the filings for any given day of the year using the daily index archive and we found out that there is this wonderful uh, file in there called the master file and it had a wonderful list of all the filings that were given that particular quarter um, regarding that particular company and then we also got a file path that we could leverage that would take us to the text file of that particular document so it was very useful it made the process of getting the actual file uh, a lot easier so in today's video we are now going to move on to okay we've got the document that we want how do we go about and parse it so we're going to focus on one particular financial document that is the 10k filing so this is something that companies do uh, annually which is they just release their annual performance it has different things related to um, you know their income statement their balance sheet their cash flow it gives an idea of kind of the risk going forward and just details and insight to how the company performs so it's a great document where if we want to just get a good holistic understanding of how the company performed that year we go to the 10k so with that being said uh, I structured this tutorial a little bit differently and hopefully you guys find it useful definitely put this in the comments if you kind of like this structure but I've got a Jupyter notebook up for us and what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to go and actually take one of the 10ks and get some information for it. So I have one particular 10K here right now. Um, it, basically this one is related to Monotronics, I think so. I might have it open, but I gotta double check because I can't remember. I don't think I have it open, I don't. Okay, so anywho, if we go to this particular URL, it brings up a text file that is just the entire 10K. Naturally, what people want to do first is they actually want to parse this particular file. And while you can do that, I find with 10Ks, if I'm getting certain pieces of information, so things like tabular data, so the actual tables that contain the information, I don't necessarily want to take the text file and parse it. There's actually an easier way we can do it. So that's actually kind of a good clarification point too in this video. We're gonna be assuming that in this particular video that we just want the tabular data. I will cover how we can tech, I mean how we can parse the actual text from the file, but for simplicity, let's just start out with the tables and then we'll come back to our 10K in another video and we'll actually go and get the text. So like I was saying before, we have this wonderful text file. It has all the information that you would find in your 10K, but we would have to parse it. And when it comes to the tabular data, there's actually a better way to do it. And what we can do is if we actually take this URL and we just modify it a little bit by basically removing these little dashes and this extension at the end, it takes us back to the actual filing folder itself. And so really what we need to do is we need to convert it into something like this. So all we really did is took the same URL, we got rid of the hash, hashes right here, and then we also changed the extension, so we removed that, and we added index.json to the end of it, for example. And what this would take us to is the company filing folder for this particular you know, filing, um, and it would return all the documents that were related to it. This should sound familiar if you've watched the other videos. But basically, if I take this URL, we're going to find it's this. It's just a little bit different. We're getting some different information back. Okay, so now we get all the documents that were related to that particular filing. And to give a more visually, I think, friendly one, uh, this is how it looks in the standard HTML format. And we can just see that there's a bunch of documents that are in here. And there's all this stuff and at first glance it's overwhelming but what you'll find is each one of these little files is just a different section of the 10k um, and actually you'll you'll notice that each one of these is just 
a, a table, really. I mean, if you open each one of these up, you'll see something kind of like this, where it's just an HTML table, and it's just code that you can parse just like that. So really, all I'm doing is I'm going to this index.json URL, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for particular a particular file. That file is called the filing XML summary. And inside the summary folder, I mean, sorry, summary file, we basically get a tree structure of how all of this looks. So that's kind of the main goal of the first section of the video. So let's start doing that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import my libraries. In this entire video, we're going to only need to use three libraries. The first one is the request library to go and make our URL request. We're going to be using pandas to basically transform our data and put it in a more, I would call it user friendly format. And then we're also going to be using beautiful soup, obviously, when it comes to parsing the content. So I just want to make sure that I import my libraries. <clears throat> okay, so it imported, I'm good to go. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this base URL, this is just going to come in handy when I actually have to create the sum summary file. Um, URL path. Um, so that's going to be used here. And so that's why I'm pulling in the base URL. And then I gave an, uh, an, an example here of, hey, this is normally the, the text file that we're working with, but all we're going to do is we're just going to transform it into something like this. So again, you would just do a simple replace where you remove this and this. Um, in the documentation that I put on GitHub, I'll actually have an example of how we can do it. But uh, kind of for time's sake, I'm not going to go into that. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to take our documents URL and we want to request it, just like we have done in other videos. So we're going to create a new variable, call it content. We're going to call the request library. We're going to call the get method. And then we're going to call the documents URL. And then we're going to get back some content. It's going to be a JSON string. So we need to parse that JSON string so that way we can create it to a um, Python dictionary. And once we've done that, we're going to loop through that particular JSON dictionary, and we're going to go into the directory uh, key, which returns the item key, which is basically just a list of files. Again, if you've seen the other videos, this should look very, very familiar. So we're going to go <clears throat> and loop through each file. So we're going to call the content object. We're going to go into the directory key. And then from here, we're going to go into the items list. So the basically a list of all the files in that particular directory. And then from here, what we're going to do is as we're going through it, we're going to grab <clears throat> the one that is called filing summary XML. So the file that we're looking for is here. And so we're just going to add an if condition to our particular loop. And all we're going to be saying is if the file name equals filing summary dot XML, then what we can do is actually make the path. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to say XML summary equals the base URL plus the content directory. And then there's another key in here called name, which if you go to that particular one, it will actually give you the name of the directory. So the file path basically, or the path to that directory, um, excluding this particular portion. So that's why I have the base URLs because it's going to be sec.gov and then it's going to be basically all this information right here, which is great. So that's kind of what that name key returns. It returns this little section right here. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add one more couple components. And so I'm going to say this, I'm going to put a forward slash, and then I'm going to say file.name. And I should be good to go. And so I get this back. And so then it prints it out for me. This is the name of the file. And then this is the file path. And so if I click this, it brings me to an XML document. And this XML document is the one that we actually want to go out and fetch and parse. Now, when you first look at it, you do want to take some time to kind of understand the data that you're looking at, because you will find there's actually a pattern behind this. Um, really, the part that I'm super concerned about is if you go into the filing summary tag, uh, there's something called my reports. And so this my reports tag contains the individual reports that you will find on this particular page. 
that's very, very useful because along with finding each individual basically file, it even gives us some more context. So things like what's the name of the, doc the document? What is the report type? Um, what's the file name? You know, what's the role, the short name? What's the category? This is super important when it comes to finding, do I want the details? Do I want the statement? Do I want um, the notes, things along that nature? So basically the My Reports tag has all the individual reports all surrounded by a report tag. And then inside that is the different information related to that report. So let's go and grab the contents of this particular XML document. And then so I did put some information here to kind of give you guys an understanding of how you need to think about this particular report tag and just going over some of the kind of the more important ones that you're looking at and kind of giving you some ideas of what it is. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new base URL and really what this is going to be used for is when we want to go and create a file path for each one of these report documents, we'll just take the current XML summary path and then we'll just drop the extension and then we'll see later that when we add uh, the URL or when we go and grab the URL which is basically just the file name we'll just take the base URL and concatenate the file name to it and so what we're going to do is we'll do base URL equals XML summary and then I'm going to call the replace method <clears throat> and then I'm going to say okay Give me the filing summary uh, .xml, and then just basically make sure and basically just cut it off, in other words. Okay, and then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new request. So we're gonna create a new variable called content, which again will restore, uh, store the contents of our request. And so we'll call request.get the XML, XML summary. <clears throat> and then we'll call the dot content attribute. So keep in mind, I didn't call JSON because I am not getting JSON back. I am getting XML. And then we're going to parse it with beautiful soup. So I'm going to create a new variable called soup uh, that will equal a beautiful soup object. And then I'm going to pass through my content. And then I'm going to specify that it's going to be LXML parsing because when we look at this document, we can clearly tell it's an XML document. <clears throat> and then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the My Reports tag because the My Reports tag contains all the individual reports. And so we'll store it in a new variable called reports and I'll do a soup.find and then I'll do My Reports, just like that. And sometimes like what I just like to do, just for sanity's sakes, uh, is just make sure that what I'm looking at, no, I guess I can't really do that if I do that. Okay, so then we get back all the content, so that's awesome. It's working just like we were expecting. <clears throat> then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a new list which will store each individual report with only the information that I'm concerned about. So let's create a master list that will just right now equal an empty list. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for report in reports, I'm going to do another find all. And then this time I'm going to look for just the report tag. Now, if I leave it just as is, it will work for every single one of them except the last one. Because if you actually go down to the final report way down to the bottom, once I get there, okay. You'll see this report, so this is a normal looking report, and then this bottom one right down here, it's not a normal one, so this actually doesn't have all the same information. And so if you want to follow it the way I'm about to do it, when we try to parse it, we would actually get an error when we try to parse this last report. And so in order to avoid that error, you have two options. You can wrap all the information in a try except statement, or you can just do what I'm going to do, which is take every one of them, except the last one. That's all I'm doing. So all that's telling me is take all the reports except the last one and loop through them. And so once we've done this, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a new object called a report dictionary. Right now it just equals an empty dictionary. And then we're going to assign new keys to it. 
And then each one of the values assigned to those keys is just a different portion of this report tag. And so what we'll do is we'll call the report dictionary and then <clears throat> we'll give the first one name short. That will equal report.shortName.text. Again, if you're wondering where I'm getting this tag from, you can just look up here as an example. It's surrounded in one of these tags, and so that's all I'm doing. And then all I want is the text from that particular tag. And so I'm going to copy this a couple times just so that way I can save some time on it. Uh, and I believe there are five that we're doing. So there's a name long. <clears throat> this will equal the long name. And then the next one will be the position. So basically the position of this report, it's really just, you know, the actual numbering behind it. Um, so it's position dot text. I got a category. Well, I call it category. They call it something different, but we'll call it category. And then this one will actually be the menu category. And then the final one will be the URL which will simply be the base URL that we defined up above. So basically everything except the filing summary XML. It's going to be that plus or concatenating report dot HTML file name dot text. And just like that, we're good. And then we want to append this report dictionary to the master report. And so we'll say uh, master reports. Actually, I just realized I misspelled that up here. So it's not master list, it's master reports. <clears throat> and then we're going to say append the report dictionary, just like that. And then what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to uncomment that so that way when we loop through it, you get some context of how it's going to look. OK, so as you can tell, all it's doing is it's going through and grabbing each one of the reports that it sees in this tag. So just like I was saying before, and again, these should all be valid URLs, which take you to individual um, document tables. And so all we've now done is we par we parsed the filing summary XML document, so the master one the one that's kind of the easiest to work with. And then we parsed it, we put it into a dictionary format, so it was a little bit easier to work with. And then we stored each dictionary in this master reports list. And then again, for you guys, I put out some printing stuff so you can see that it's actually pulling it and you can kind of get an idea of what each report looks like, um, the short name. There is an ID here. It's not consistent across companies though. Some are in the sense of, if I go up here, you will find that most of them have their second report as being their income statement. In fact, I was so kind of curious about this. I put this all in an Excel file and I pulled like, I would say 30 or 40 companies or something like that. And I pulled all their 10 Ks just to see if there was any kind of consistency when it came to their uh, ID convention. And unfortunately for certain reports, it's not it's not the case because some are just industry specific, um, but things like the balance sheet or things along that nature, eh, they're kind of consistent, but you'll still see that it's not perfect. So for example, these were all the balance sheets that I pulled for just different companies. And you can see that some do three, some do two, but for the most part, a lot of them do two. So it's consistent, but I can't promise that every time you pull a company that you can trust the ID that you're looking at because it does appear that it's not entirely consistent. Um, funny enough, the name is actually probably more consistent than the actual ID itself. So I've actually had a little bit more success when it came to naming conventions than with the actual ID itself. Okay, so now that we've gone and we parsed the, the filing summary document, Let's actually go and grab the financial statements. And so what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to create a list that's going to hold all the statements that we're looking for and their corresponding URLs. So I'm going to create a new list called statements URL. 
This again will equal an empty list at this point. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through this new uh, master reports list that we had created up above. So basically the list of all this information. And we're gonna say for report dictionary in master reports, we're gonna first define the items that we want to look for. So I do have this in another file, so I'm actually gonna grab that one just really quickly. Just because again, for time purposes, I'm not gonna hopefully spend too much time on that part. What you'll notice here is that these are simply the name of the financial documents that I want, or in this case, the financial statement. So if I go back up here to the top, you will see that there is a consolidated balance sheet that's right here. Um, and I've defined that as one of the documents that I wanna look for. And then what I do is I create a new list called a report list, and that just simply equals each one of these items. So item one, item two, item three, item four, and then finally item five. So just like that. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna ask a very simple question. If the report dictionary that I'm currently on in my loop, if the short name of that particular report is in uh, the report list, then you can go to this little stuff down here. But more importantly, I also want you to append that particular URL um, to my to my statements URL list, and so. Uh, I wanna go into my report dictionary and call the URL key. And let's see what we get when we run this. Oh, I need to have my colon. No, oh, apparently I put a fifth item too. <laughs> okay, and so all that we've done here is we've now gone and grabbed each one of the financial statements that we wanted to work with. Um, and so actually, I have each one of these open. This is the balance sheet. This is the income statement. And then this is the cash flow statement. And then we have a consolidated statements of stockholders equity. And then I think that was the final one. Yeah, okay, so that's just the filing summary. So I have uh, the four individual statements. And now what we're gonna do with each one of these statements is we're gonna go and request this content because all it is is just HTML code. And then we're gonna parse it for the information that we're looking for. So just to kind of recap a little bit, is this the one that I'm, okay, good. I think that was the one, perfect. Um, just to recap, just a little bit before we go on, imported the libraries. We talked about the URL, we, we requested the filing summary, we parsed the filing summaries for the reports, we then got the reports that we wanted, and now we're gonna go and get the contents for each one of those reports. So this is probably gonna be the longer part of the video, but what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create a new list called the statements data list. And this one is gonna hold each of the individual statements data. So what do I evaluate the data, the rows and the numbers and all that kind of fun stuff. So we have this master list, which is gonna have all the statements. And then what we're gonna do next is now that we've defined our list is we're gonna loop through each statement in my statements URL list. And then what we're gonna do after this <clears throat> is we're gonna define a new dictionary. This new dictionary, it's basically gonna hold the individual components of each statement. The way I like to think about the individual components is, if I go back to one of my documents, is that we can have a header section that's right up here. To kind of give you more context, I'll actually inspect the elements. So if you go down here, where is it? Okay, you'll find this table tag right here, which is the actual XML. We're gonna go and grab that table one. Um, and then you'll notice that inside the body of the table, you'll have this, this section up here is defined as the header row. And then you'll have these little sections down here that are kind of bolded. And these are defining the different sections of that particular financial statement. So if you look at the balance sheet, we have current assets, 
um, current liabilities, non-current liabilities, things along that particular nature. So this is just our opportunity to kind of break it down into more defined sections, if you want to call it. And so what I do before I even start parsing it is when I, I'm, I'm expecting that I'm going to have different sections of my particular financial statement. So I just store each section in the corresponding component of the actual statement data dictionary. So I create a new statement data dictionary. At this point, it's just going to be an empty dictionary. And then I'm going to create the different sections of that dictionary. And I'm going to say statement data. And then we'll call the first one headers. This will have an empty list, and then we're going to append rows to that empty list. And then again, statement data, and then we're going to go into the sections. Again, it will be an empty list, statement data, and then this one will be the actual data, so kind of like the numbers in a sense. Okay, and so when I do that, we should be good to go. We're going to go and request the content of one particular um, statement at a time in our loop. So we're going to create a new variable, call it content. That's going to equal our request library. We're going to call the get method. And then it's going to be the statement. Because again, this is just a list of URLs. And then <clears throat> we're going to get the content of that particular request. And then we're going to parse it using beautiful soup. So I'll create a new variable called report soup. That will equal a beautiful soup object where we pass through the content and then we need to specify the parser which is html in this example you might be asking how did i know it was html well if you go back here um, all of this information here is under an html tag so this is all html content that we can parse and in fact if you go to each one of these you will see that they're um, all html tables okay so now that we've done that what's kind of our next step well if I go back here, I know all my in information basically lives in this table object, right? For the most part. So what I really want to do is I want to grab this table object and then I want to find all the rows of this particular table. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the table object and then we're going to call the find all method where I look for each one of these rows. And that's really kind of all I'm going to just going to be doing. That That's the gist of it. So what we'll do is we're going to find all those rows and then we're going to loop through each row. Now, when I loop through it, I'm actually going to loop through an enumerated list. And so I'm going to wrap everything in an enumerate um, function. So we're going to say for index and then comma row in enumerate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my report soup. I'm going to find my table object and then I'm going to find all the table rows, just like that. And then from here, <clears throat> we're gonna start iterating through each row. If you go into each row, you'll notice that each one of them has these TD tags. These are just the individual elements of that particular row. You can kind of think of them like columns. So this is the row. And then each, these are each column. So the TD is kind of like the column or the individual element. It's kind of how you want to think about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically find all the elements for every given row. And we'll store it in a new variable. We'll just call it columns, right? And so we'll say equals row dot find all um, the TD tags. And then from here, um, now it kind of comes the more... I want to say complicated part, but we just have to kind of ask certain questions. So this was kind of the part that I got stuck on for a while because you, I mean, you can always do it, but there's a simpler way of doing it. And then there's kind of this more complex way. And so the first question I always want to ask when I was looking at this was what type of row am I working with? Am I working with a header row? Am I working with just a regular row? Am I working with a section row? Um, that was kind of the thing that I was working with because if I knew what type of row I was working with, I knew how to parse it then. And so I had to develop a system where I could identify a header row, a section row, or just a regular row. Well, the header rows are very easy to find. In fact, they're probably the easiest because if you go here, <clears throat> each, if you look at the row, if they have any TH tags in them, table headers, 
you know it's a header row. So this is probably one of the easiest ones to work with. However, um, that's great for headers, but what if it's like a section row? So something like, where is it? I just had it, like right here. This is basically a section because it's saying non-current liabilities and there's really nothing across. And so that to me was saying, okay, it's, it's a section. So how could I easily identify a section? Well, what I recognize is that only the section tags have a strong tag inside of them. So if it's got a strong tag in it, it is basically a section. However, if you go up here to the table header, uh, where is it? Uh, they also have a strong tag in it. The way to distinguish a section from a header is that a section only has a strong tag, whereas a header has a strong tag and a table header tag. And then a normal row doesn't have either one of them. So the way we build our logic into it is the following. <clears throat> We're gonna say if the count of row.findAll table headers is equal to zero. So in this particular one, I'm looking for a regular row. So if there's no table headers, that's great so far. And I'm gonna copy this component. <clears throat> there's no strong elements tags in it. So if that equals zero, then we were working with a particular, um, we were working basically with a regular tag, so a regular row. So I wrap these all around in the parentheses. So if that particular row, if it has no table header tags, and it also doesn't have any strong tags, we can assume that it's a regular row. And then all I did is I kind of just copied this logic down. So for example, if I put this one here, and then I just do an elif statement. But in this one, I'm looking for uh, a section. So in this one, this has to equal zero, so it still doesn't have any table header rows, but the strong element does not equal zero. So in other words, there is a strong element tag in that particular row. So in this situation, if there's no table headers, but there's a strong element tag, then we can consider it to be a section header. And then finally, this one down here, the final one right here, <clears throat> where is it? This would be the else. Um, this one, I just removed this statement like that, if I can highlight it. And all I ask here is I'm saying, if the particular row has table headers, then we can consider it to be a, um, a table header tag. So in other words, uh, it didn't stop at this point. So it still doesn't have any table headers, then we can consider it to be a table header tag. And so that's kind of how I built the logic into it. And then I also, um, also do a final else statement. Oh, and I'm sorry, I just realized that um, I did an elif. Oh, I did an else instead of an elif. Um, and then I kind of put this final one in here, which is uh, uh, we encountered an error, which I'm sure I'll run into this one on the particular video, because that's usually how it works. Okay, so again, just to kind of recap a little bit. All we did is we found we're looping through each row and we have to ask a particular question about each row. Is it a header row? Is it a regular row? Or is it a section row? If there's no header tags and there's no strong tags, it's a regular row. If there's no header tags, but there are strong tags, then it actually is a section header. If there's only header tags, so basically if there's header tags, um, then it's a header section. And then in this case, if an error happens, just print there's an error. So now that we've defined the logic for working through each row, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna declare a new variable, which will equal regular row, and then we're gonna do list comprehension to parse each individual element. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to say for element in columns, so the variable that we defined up here, we're going to say uh, element dot text dot strip um, for each element. And so this will store it in a list. <clears throat> and then from here, we're going to call our statement data one. It will equal data. And then we, we will append the regular row. So just like that. And so I'm going to copy this one. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. It's going to vary a little bit because, again, we parse it differently depending on which type of row it is. Okay. I'm going to grab this one. And then, okay, so what if it's a section header? Well, with a section header, all I really want is just that first column value or that first element value. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, section row is equal to the columns, the, basically the first column, again the text, and again we strip everything out of it. And then this one, now I'm changing it to the section row. So I'm still appending it to the same data set, but in this particular one, oh sorry, not the data one, the, the sections one. So now I'm going to append it to the sections uh, list in the dictionary. And then for finally the header row, we're going to change our variable. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to just change it a tiny bit is instead of looping through the columns list, we're actually going to do a row dot find all. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find all the table headers just like that. And then we're going to append that head row to the headers one, just like that. And then now that we've parsed through the entire table, we still have one final thing we need to do, which is we need to append this data um, to the master data list up here. Because now we finished parsing that particular statement, right? So we'll say statements underscore data dot append statement data. And then from here, I'll kind of, uh, I'll insert a cell below. And we'll do statement data. And so now we basically have each individual statement inside of here. That's all we're doing. And so if I grab the first statement, I'm working with the balance sheet. The second one, I'm working with the income statement. Second one is cash flow. And then you can go into each different section of this particular um, financial statement. So maybe I just want the headers. Okay, there you go. Maybe I just want the sections or something like that, right? So there's the sections. <clears throat> uh, maybe I want the data, right? Just something like that. So now we, we have all the data that we need. And so from this point, we're good to go. We can now take each individual statement and we can basically start putting it into a pandas data frame. So hopefully this part made sense to everybody. Again, if you've seen other videos that I've done with web scraping, if you've seen kind of you know, other videos related to the SEC stuff, I find this part to probably be the most confusing. But again, all we did is we built a list of URLs, we requested each URL, we just took the HTML content, and we just looped through each row. And we were just grabbing the corresponding information. So we would find a row, we asked a question whether it was a header row, a section row, or a regular row, we looped through each one of the um, the, the TD tags, and we would just grab the corresponding information uh, related to that particular tag. So for example, if I went here, I would find, oh, look, it's a, it's a number or something along that nature. So I would parse it, and I would store that information in a list. And so that, that's really just what I was doing here. Okay, 
So now that we've done that, let's move to the final section, which is converting the information into a data frame. And so I'm going to just put this up here temporarily so you guys can see it. Um, I'm going to put income headers. So I want to work with the income statement. I'm going to go into my statements data list. I'm going to grab the first statement, which was the income one. And there's probably a better way we could have done this with naming conventions where it's like, oh, I just know to type income statement instead of having to remember the order. Um, so I do that. And you'll first thing you'll know is the income headers has two lists in it. So one is kind of the first section, and then the second one is the actual dates. And so this isn't for every statement. Uh, example, the balance sheet only has one header row, right? But if you go to the income statement, we kind of have this first header row and then the second header row. So there were, in some cases, we actually parsed two header rows. Now, in our particular example, when we work with the data frame, I'm really concerned with the dates. And so all I do is I just say, okay, um, that's fine. Just give me the first list. And so now that just gives me um, the, the list of the dates. And I guess it's not the first list, but the second list. So that's all we did here. And then we need the actual data as well. So we'll create a new variable called income data. That is the statements data. Again, the first one. Um, but this time I want the data section. And so if I change this to the data, now we have each row and the corresponding value for each value in our particular um, financial statement. <clears throat> so you've got like radio conversion costs, it's very oddly specific, uh, loss on goodwill impairment, operating income loss, so kind of just all the different sections of that particular uh, financial statement. So I'm gonna grab that, put that there, and then I'm gonna cut that so because I don't need it anymore. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this information uh, inside a data frame. And the first thing you're going to notice about this data frame is it's messy as could be, because that's how things are, right? <laughs> no, it's actually not that bad. Okay, so we got income data. I'm actually going to comment all this out because it will give me an error if I try to do it. And so what you'll see here is before I do any kind of re-indexing or things like that, this is kind of what I'm getting. Keep in mind, this is only the first five rows. So I just I print the head. If I did it without the head, I would be getting everything back. But again, just for demonstration purposes, let's just keep it at the head. Um, so that kind of brings us into the first problem is this really should be my index is this column. So let's re-index it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to call our income data frame. Uh, we call the index property and we say, hey, that index needs to equal that column, so column zero. Um, and once we do that, you'll notice something, which is basically is it puts it, but then it doesn't delete this old one. So we need to delete the old one Otherwise, it's we've got this kind of messy situation. Um, there's kind of one thing I do before I actually delete it, though, which is I rename it. So I call the index property, I call the name property, and then what I do is I just set it to equal to category, something kind of intuitive. And then I create a new income data frame that equals the old one, but I call the drop method. I specify the column that I want to drop, and then I specify the axis, which is one. So I want to drop along the column axis. And then if I do this, so before we indexing, and then before we do anything else, now we have this looking data frame, which is okay. Now we've got our index, but we've still got this problem, which is these dollar signs are here. So that's telling me right now it's a string, which is a problem. I can't do any kind of calculation on a string or things along that nature. Um, and then there's also these blank values here, which really should be represented as a non-value. Um, and then also some information related to negative values. So um, it's kind of lowered down. But you see these negative values is they shouldn't technically have that if they're true negatives. So what I need to do is I need to do some replace operations on this particular data frame. So I'm gonna create a new data frame that's just equal to the old one and that will uh, income data frame 
I'm going to call the replace method. And then I'm going to pass through some stuff. And so I'm going to put my brackets and I'm going to say forward slash dollar sign. So I want to look for a dollar sign, a comma, or a uh, <coughs> forward bracket. And I just want to replace all of that with nothing. So just basically delete it otherwise. And then I'm going to, uh, what is it? Specify that I want to use regular expression. So I'm going to set that equal to true. And then I want to kind of do this as a multi-line one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm again going to call the replace method because there's still other things I have to replace. This is really kind of dealing with the positive values. Now I need to deal with the negative values. Um, and so what I got to do next is I'm going to say, okay, well now if you, um, if you see this particular character, what you need to do is you need to replace that with a minus sign. And then again, regular expression is equal to true. And then we got one final replace operation that we need to do. And this is really handling the, the kind of the empty values. And so what we'll say next is this. Well, actually, it's really just that. And then what we're going to say here is if you see a blank value, you need to replace that with a non-value. And so we'll say again, reg x is true. And then really, that that's it. That's that's the first part of it. <laughs> and so we'll we'll do this. And so now we should have something that looks a little bit better. Okay, so we got rid of the dollar signs. We got uh, we took care of the minus signs, and we made sure that missing values are just non, like they should be. So the first thing that you'll notice though is just because it has it like this doesn't mean each one of these is actually a float data type. So they should be floats because they're currency values. Um, right now they're still strings. And so I need to actually convert my data frame so that way they're all strings. And so this is probably the simplest out of all of them. Again, we're just gonna create a new data frame. It's gonna equal the old one after we've called the as type method. And then we say, hey, everything in my data frame can be a float because it's just going to disregard my, my index one. So that's that works for me. Um, and then really the final thing I, I kind of want to do is I want more meaningful column names because right now it's just one, two, three, four, five. Um, and so if you remember up here, I grabbed the headers. I'm going to just have the column names equal that, that list of values. And so that's, that's really simple. You again call the data frame. This time we just call the columns property and we just say it needs to equal that income header list. And then finally, uh, that's kind of our final product. And then I will actually just do one final thing. Did I not spell it correctly? Oh, headers. Okay, so now we have um, everything with our particular data frame, just like we were seeing. So this looks good. I'm happy with this. I think this makes everything look nice and smooth. And so really at this point, you would really just be doing this for each financial statement. You would kind of parse it, do whatever you want with it. We could pivot this. We can do a lot with that. Um, I'm going to kind of hold off until a later video for that, just because I think this video is kind of long enough. But uh, kind of just one final thing. You can always put your stuff to a CSV file if you want to just save it for later. But at this point, you have something that it's been parsed, it's in the right data format, and everything's kind of been taken care of to where you can feel comfortable to start performing calculations on it. The only final thing you might have to always kind of ask is, you know, can I do a calculation with a non-value? Do I have to have a zero there or something like that? Um, it really just depends, you know, what you're doing. I do have a CSV file I, I tried with it. And so if you had put this to a CSV file, um, this is how it would come out is, is a little bit like that. So, you know, it, it's getting us kind of to where we need to be. So with that being said, I am gonna finish the video. I think I've taken enough of everyone's time. So if you have any questions about what I covered in today's video or, you know, whether it relates to, you know, getting the actual XML summary, you know, parsing that particular XML summary, getting the financial statements, parsing the financial statements, you know, converting them into a pandas data frame, anything related to that, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as always.
Also, if you could make sure to like the video, we always appreciate the support. And then if you're not already, uh, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So we're gonna obviously continue this series because again, this is where we're getting all of our data for some of the machine learning models and things along that nature. And just from my experience, a lot of people um, are not aware <laughs> that you can actually get all your information from the SEC. So you can get a lot of historical information basically for free, as long as you kind of know where you're looking for it and uh, how to parse it. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, um, for example, how we can actually do queries inside of our particular um, like filing stuff. So I think I have another URL over here. Yeah, something like this. So all we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we can basically create this URL up here to actually query the documents. And again, it's, it's very similar where we would get the documents. You'd still have to parse them. But again, this is just another technique to show you guys how to get the information that you need to get. So uh, thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.